Now this first link is done. Now to the second link, now the controller has to pass this model to the view. So what's going to happen is in our success.jsp, we need to get this user object and we need to print the username from this user object. Now, how do I do that? Notice what's happening here. We have a response.send redirect. Now, in our earlier tutorial, we saw that this is actually not a typical response as uh, uh, HTML, but instruction to the browser to actually go make another request to this success.jsp. So what we are looking at is two requests. So the first request comes to the do post as uh, you know uh, a submission of this form and then we do all this work here we get all the user details and then we do a send redirect so the browser makes another request for the success.jsp now we need to keep this user object in a scope that will be available across requests so the only two scopes that we know which uh, you know which are available across requests are the session scope and the application scope uh, of course, we cannot use a request scope in this case because there are two different requests. Now, the application scope will not be valid here because, uh, you know, it's uh, used across all the different users. Now, another user enters a different user ID and password. Uh, they should have their user ID available and not somebody else's. So, um, we cannot save this object in the application scope. So, that leaves the session scope, which works out fine because once the user has logged in, in that particular session, we can have this user object available in the session. And then even if we have, uh, you know, from the success.jsp, if we re redirect to another JSP or another servlet, even that can access this user object. So all I need to do here is to save this user object in the session. So I will do a request dot get session dot set attribute and I will have the user as a string and the object that I'll pass is user object. This is the object that we have got. Now once I set it to the session and then do a send redirect to the JSP. Now in this JSP this object will be available in the session. So it's just a matter of getting the value from the session and then printing out the username. We've already seen how we can get the object from the session. So I'll open up a script block here. I will say user equals, and I need to get this value. So I use the session dot get attribute of user and of course I need to cast this here because this returns an object. A user is something that we need to import. Now the way to import as we've already seen is by using this page directive. I'll say import equals, I'll specify the package name with the class name. user okay now once we have the user object here then all I need to do is print the hello message and print out the user dot get username we'll save this save the servlet and let's run this JSP run the login.jsp okay now I need to enter one of the users available here we are not doing any error error checking um, you can do that later but for uh, brevity I have skipped all the error checking here we need to do a whole lot of error checking because in case the user ID is not one of these we need to handle that appropriately. But 
let me enter the the same value here submit query well there you go the login dot JSP has made a call to login service a login servlet and the login servlet had got the user object from the login service and then saved it in the session now where you know it also redirected to the success.jsp and in the success.jsp we have pulled that value from the session and we are printing out the username okay a couple of things before we wind up um, the user object is in a package which has the name DTO. The DTO here means data transfer object. We used the word model before. So uh, a data transfer object is actually same as the model. So this object is used to transfer data between layers. We've already seen that uh, this object is used to transfer data between the business service to the servlet to the JSP. And uh, if you have a data layer, it goes from the data layer to the business service and then so on. So uh, this is this is a commonly used uh, name for uh, the model object. We can also call this as a data transfer object. Uh, secondly, the success.jsp is actually pulling out value from the session because we are doing a response.send redirect and uh, it's making a new request from the browser. So what's happening is uh, the browser is actually making a second call to success.jsp after the first call is made. Let me, let me show you that. Now, say I enter uh, my user ID and uh, password here and then do a submit query. From here, it goes to the login servlet. So that's the first call. And then the login servlet returns a send redirect. And then it makes a second call to the success.jsp. Now, because it's a different call, the values in the request object will be lost. The user ID and password that you enter in the first call will be lost. So that's the reason why we have to save our results in a session so that it's available to the success.jsp, which is the second call. Now, what if I cannot save this in the session. Now, not every data can be saved in the session. What if I want to send the values in the same request and make this available in the request of the next call as well? What if I want to persist the request object even over here and have that available in the same request? So now we'll learn the second way in which we can uh, take the flow of control from one servlet or JSP to another servlet or JSP. And uh, the way to do that is, let me remove the send redirect here. The way to do this is instead of uh, passing the instruction to the browser in order to access a different URL like we're doing now, we need to actually do the redirect on the server side itself. So the browser does not know this time that the redirection is actually happening to another URL or another uh, servlet or JSP. The way we can do this is by using something called as a request dispatcher. Now this request dispatcher object is available in the request object. Just like we pull a whole lot of uh, objects from this request object, we can also use the request dispatcher that's available here. So if we look at the request object dot we have this method here, get request dispatcher. Now the get request dispatcher takes an argument, which is the resource that you're actually dispatching the control to. In our case, it is success.jsp. So I can simply pass success.jsp here. Now let me, let me put this inside a, a member variable. So I'll define a new request dispatcher. equals request dot get request dispatcher. So now I have this request dispatcher here. I need to import this. This is from javax.servlet. Now, once I have this dispatcher, I can use this dispatcher to actually transmit the control to this value that has been defined in this request dot dispatcher. So in order to transmit this control, I need to pass the request and response objects. 
Why do we need to do that? We need to do this because we still consider this as the same request. So I use dispatcher dot, there is a method called forward. So this forward has two arguments. It's the request and the response. So now once we pass the same request and response that we are getting for uh, this particular do post, now once it, dispatcher takes this request and response and does a forward to the new resource that we have defined here, once this happens, the success.jsp will get the same request and response that this login servlet has got. The advantages of this is, one, the browser does not know that this is a new request. It is happening on the server itself. The second advantage is that whatever request attributes and parameters were passed to this do post for this login sublet, the same thing is being passed on to the success.jsp. I'm passing the same request and the response and I'm passing this to the new the success.jsp resource. Now the success.jsp will have access to all the parameters that are in this request object. Now since we are doing this, I don't need to set this user inside a session. I can set this inside the request. So I will change this instead of setting this in the session, I will set this inside the request object. Dot set attribute and I'll save the user as an attribute of the request object. Now, once it's in the request object and I'm creating a new dispatcher and I'm dispatching this request to success.jsp, you know, I'm passing the request and the response. Now this request will be available in the success.jsp as well. So I don't have to get this from the session. What I'll do instead is I'll get this from the request. Request.get attribute of the user, which is what we have, which is what we have saved here. Let me save this. Okay, just to summarize the change we are making, instead of setting the user object that we've got from the business service into the session, we are saving this inside the request object itself. And the reason why we are doing that is instead of doing a send redirect and uh, making the client or the browser make a new request to the you know, success.jsp page, we are actually dispatching it internally in the server itself. So I'm getting a new request dispatcher for the success.jsp, which is the resource that we are uh, passing on the request to. And then we use a dispatcher dot forward and I pass on the request and response that we have got so that these become the request and response for the success.jsp as well. And in the success.jsp, instead of getting the user object from the session, I'm getting it from the request since the request is being shared between the login servlet and the success.jsp. Now, the advantage of this is now I can get the user ID and the password that was passed on to the login.servlet as well. Now I'm saving the model alone, but if required, I can get the user ID and password because it is actually a continuation of the same request. Now let's try this out. Enter the username and some password, press submit. Well, the result is the same but we know what's happening. We are actually passing the same request. The only thing we can notice as different is that we see in the URL, the, you know, the URL is still login, which is the destination of the form. We do not see a success.jsp here because the server has internally passed on the request to the success.jsp. It is not apparent to the user. So this is the second way in which we can pass control from a servlet to a servlet or a JSP. And uh, this is useful if you don't want to create a new request and you want to pass on the request parameters that we have to the destination servlet or JSP page.